Okay, uh, welcome to the lesson on compositions of transformations, lesson five of six in unit seven. Um, and so what our focus is going to be on today is uh, compositions of transformations. Uh, and basically this occurs when we uh, apply a transformation. Uh, transformation at this point means reflection, rotation, or translation. Uh, we apply a transformation to a figure and then uh, and second transformation is applied to the image of that figure and we call this composition of transformations uh, and we're going to use different compositions or combinations of these uh, one of the most important things to understand with compositions of transformations generally speaking uh, is that order matters and so if you change the order in which you uh, transform uh, the figure and its image uh, you will change the outcome with some exceptions. One of those exceptions is something called a glide reflection. All a glide reflection is is a translation uh, and a reflection. Uh, and under uh, one circumstance in particular, uh, where the glide, which of course is a translation, uh, is parallel to the line of reflection, then order does not matter. Okay, and so what that really means is if I were, and so this isn't in the example, I'll just take a moment though to explain it. If I were to take uh, point A and uh, I were to translate it uh, using the translation vector uh, minus 5, 0, then effectively what I'm doing is I'm taking point A and I'm moving it five places to the left. One, two, three, four, five. That would uh, uh, result in its image being uh, uh, at A prime, which is at 1 minus 2. And if I follow that by a reflection in the x-axis, then what I'm going to do is end up with a double prime um, at the coordinate 1, 2. So it's reflected over the x-axis. Uh, since the translation vector, uh, which is the is effectively a line segment joining A to A prime, since the uh, translation vector is parallel to the x-axis, what you should be able to see is if I had reflected that point first, and then translated it five units over, I would have ended up in the same place. So the point of this really is just to explain that if we have a glide reflection where the glide is parallel to the line of reflection, order does not matter. Okay, that is generally, that is the acceptance, uh, sorry, that is the exception to the general rule that if you change the order of uh, transformations that you will get a different result. Okay. I'm going to just clear that off because that's not the specific example we want to focus on. So what I'm going to do basically now is a little bit of a recap of the previous lessons because we're going to do a, a bunch of transformations in a specific order. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the image of point A after first a translation and then a reflection over the y-axis. So this translation tells me to move three places left and one up. So one, two, three left and one up. Uh, that's the image of A after the translation, uh, and then I'm going to reflect that over the y-axis. Uh, when I'm reflecting over the y-axis, uh, we could use the rule uh, for reflection over the y-axis maps the point x, y uh, onto the point uh, minus, uh, when you reflect over the y-axis, it changes the sign of the x, so it's minus x, y. Um, we could figure the coordinates of this out uh, figure out the coordinates of its image and then plot the point. Uh, obviously it's a little quicker and easier if we just count uh, we are three units away from the line of reflection which is the y-axis and so I'm going to go three uh, blocks or units the other side and this is going to be a double prime uh, or uh, the image of the image. So this is um, the final um, uh, result from the composition of transformations. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, now we're going to find the image of segment CD. Uh, we're going to reflect it in the x-axis and then rotate 90 degrees about the origin. Uh, for a rotation about the origin, so this will be our center of rotation, the origin. A rotation of 90 degrees is positive, so of course we're going in a counterclockwise direction. So remember, we are, uh, we're moving in a counterclockwise direction. Um, and the rule for a reflection, uh, 90 degrees, uh, maps the point uh, x, y to the point minus y, 
x. So flip the coordinates and change the sign of the new x. Okay, uh, so you can do it by coordinates or some of you are able to do it visually as well. So we'll start by reflecting over the x-axis. So that's going to put point C prime over here, uh, D prime over here. And then I'm just going to draw freehand. That's going to be the image of CD. I'm now going to uh, rotate that 90 degrees so we can use coordinates. Uh, the image of C uh, has the coordinates minus 7, uh, minus 1. Uh, D prime's coordinates 1, 2, 3. So minus 3, minus 2. Um, if we're going to use our rule over here, then we're going to get uh, coordinates of our images. In this particular case, uh, C double prime's coordinates uh, are going to be positive 1 minus 7, uh, and D double prime's coordinates are going to be uh, positive 2, uh, negative 3. And so I can go ahead and plot those. So we have 1, oh, can do that. 1 minus 7, and that's going to be C double prime, and then we have the point 2 minus 3, and that is D double prime, and that is uh, the final result of our composition of transformations. Okay, what I'm going to do very briefly um, is just show you uh, on um, Jump to Sketchpad if we had done that transformation in a different order. And so what I'm going to do very quickly is put a point at the origin, uh, mark that as the center, uh, I'm going to select CD, uh, and I'm going to uh, rotate that 90 degrees. Uh, so I'll rotate that 90 degrees and I'll just label very quickly uh, my points. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, reflect that over the x-axis and you'll notice I'm doing this in the reverse order because I'm trying to show you that the result is not the same and so what I'm going to do is sorry I need to reflect in the x-axis so I'm now going to take the image which is already highlighted uh, I'm going to double click the x-axis to mark it as the line of reflection and I'm going to reflect uh, and then we'll label that uh, and what you can see very clearly is that uh, when we uh, reflected and then rotated, we ended in the fourth quadrant, um, and over here we have ended up uh, actually in the second quadrant where the original line segment started. So the point of this is to show you that order matters, uh, and you must transform in the order that you're given. Okay, back to the examples. Um, so all of the transformations that we've done so far are called isometries. Uh, they are isometric. Uh, remember, that's the same thing. Uh, another phrase for this is a congruence mapping. And what a congruence mapping means is that we don't uh, actually change any of the, the lengths or angles in the figure when we make our transformation. So when you have a composition of transformations and the transformations uh, are isometric, then the composition is also isometric. Okay, I have to speed things up here a little bit. So uh, same kind of process, what we're going to do is find... Uh, a double prime, B double prime, C double prime, we have uh, two uh, reflections, one in the line X equals minus one and one in the line X equals six. And so I'm just going to use uh, counting distances. So C is two away. So C prime is going to be two away on the other side. And what I'm going to do just to save a little bit of time is just draw up this first one quickly. Okay, and what you can see here is that I've just counted the distances and we now have the image after the reflection in the line x equals 1. We're now going to perform the second reflection. This is in the line x equals 6. So once again, I'm going to use counting. Um, I'm just counting the distance from each of the image points to the line of reflection. Okay, and so I've completed uh, the reflection of the image to give us our A double prime, B double prime, C double prime triangle. Uh, and what you can see from this uh, is what is written over here. When we have uh, reflections, two reflections, and the lines of reflection are both parallel, uh, we can achieve the same re result actually by a translation. And so uh, what I'm going to do is pick point B, uh, look at B double prime, and if we count the number of blocks between B and B double prime, uh, one, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You can see that the total distance traveled uh, uh, is 14 units. Uh, what you should also notice is that the distance between the lines of reflection is in fact 7 units uh, and this uh, confirms or shows us uh, the first of our theorems which says uh, if you have a composition of two reflections in parallel lines uh, they can be described by a translation vector that is perpendicular to the two lines uh, and twice the distance between the two lines. Okay, uh, so moving on to example number three, uh, what we're going to do here is uh, this question instead of actually being asked to perform the transformations, now we're having to name them. And so here we have got uh, the original PQR, here we have its image, P prime, Q prime, R prime. Hopefully it's fairly obvious to you from the fact that each of the sides are parallel that what has occurred in the first transformation is in fact translation. Uh, the method for identifying the components of a translation are of course to pick any of the points and count how far left, right, up or down we've traveled. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six left, one, two, three down. So we're going six left and three down. And then what you should hopefully also be able to recognize is that from the image to uh, the image of the image, so P uh, from P, uh, P prime, R prime, Q prime to the double primes, that the orientation of the figure has changed. And so if I go from P prime in a uh, clockwise direction, I go P prime to R prime to Q prime. When I do it for the other figure, the order of the letters has changed. What this should tell you is that uh, we have reflected the figure and in this particular case, all we now need to do is find the midpoint uh, to identify where the line of reflection is going to be. Uh, and in this particular case, our line of reflection is a, uh, a horizontal line uh, in the form or in the equation y equals 1. So we have a reflection of the line y equals 1. And as mentioned before, order matters. If you wrote those the other way around, the result would not be the same. Okay. So now what we're going to do uh, is uh, a, a pair of uh, reflections, but this time the lines of reflection are intersecting each other. Okay, and so I'm going to do this by distances again. Uh, okay, so I've just drawn those two in in the interest of time. So once again, I'm reflecting over line P by counting, and we get uh, A prime, B prime, C prime, and then I'm reflecting over line Q again by counting, and you'll notice I'm looking at the distance from B prime to line Q, which is diagonally, and then I'm going the same distance to the other side. And what we're going to end up here is our final result. Uh, this point over here is, of course, a double prime as well because it's on the line of reflection and therefore invariant. Hopefully what you're going to recognize at this point, and so I'll just write down some coordinates here so that we can see it. If we look at B's coordinates, B's coordinates are minus 6 and 9. And if we look at B double prime's coordinates, we have got 9 on the x-axis and 6 on the y-axis. And so hopefully what you realize is that that follows the rule for a rotation. And in fact, that is a rotation of 90 degrees. Uh, and we then have our uh, uh, conclusion over here. The composition of two reflections in intersecting lines is the same as a rotation. In this particular case, it's a rotation of 90 degrees because hopefully what you recognized is that that angle is 45 degrees and you can recognize that because the slope of the line is 1 over 1. This leads us to the second theorem which says that when you reflect in intersecting lines um, uh, you can describe that instead in a single transformation by rotation about the point where the lines intersect and so if we go back very quickly and have a look at this you'll see that O is the center of rotation uh, and that the angle is twice as big as the angle of intersection between the two lines. Okay, we're a little low on time, so I'm just going to show you this very last one by sketching it out, and then I'll talk you through it. Okay, and so very quickly you can see what I've done is I've tried to get a perpendicular distance from E to the first line, same distance the other side. I've repeated the process to get to E double prime. The question now wants us to write um, uh, a single transformation and so I'm going to write that just now. 
Okay, and there we have our answer, a rotation about point P of minus 1.